Hello my amazing people, Hamza here and welcome back to the channel. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a dynamic portfolio website and specifically for this tutorial, I'll show you how to create one for a web designer just like you. I'm going to take you the basic steps on how you can set up a dynamic website with WordPress whereby you are able to pull data from the WordPress back end into your front end so that in case you really want to make changes or your clients want to make changes on your web project that you delivered, they don't have to tamper anything to do with their design. And that will not only save you time and money, but will help you to actually build up your skill set and you'll be able to charge more and obviously have more experience. Besides showing you how to create the dynamic section of this website, I'll also take you through how I created every other section, every other page, so you actually have an idea on how you can actually come up with a nice looking design. Because in the poll that I pushed out about four months ago, you guys actually voted for dynamic content and also design inspiration. And that's why I feel like it's important not to leave out the design section of this website. And so if you really want to level up your skill set in web design, and getting into creation of dynamic websites, this is a tutorial for you. And guess what? I'll also be leaving these files for download so that you are able to simply import them into your website and get started on your next dynamic web project. So without any further ado, let's jump straight into the video and I'll show you exactly what we are going to be creating and how we actually create it. Welcome back to the video. Before we actually get any further, I want to first take you through on the kind of website portfolio we are going to be creating. And I want our focus in this video to be basically on the dynamic sections of this website. But later on in the video, I'll show you also how you can create such sections like the header, your first header section, a testimonial section like this, and also a footer. But right now, we are going to focus on the dynamic section. What you see over right here is a list you can call it a loop or a loop listing. You can call it a grid that can actually show that card or listing grid or a loop on your home page or on your portfolio list. Over here, it summarizes the kind of projects that you have. For example, in this case, we have a featured image. We have uh, the client name. We, we have the project details. We have the themes or the theme that was used. In this case, the person doing this Website is a web designer, but also does branding. So some projects actually will not require him to build websites, but only do the branding side. That's why you see that over here, a theme is not required. And also down below here, it lists the software that was used in that project and also the duration of that project. And I have to tell you that all this information is dynamic. And by dynamic, I mean that is only entered into the back end of your website. It can be the client who actually logs into the website and they enter this information and they don't have to do anything to do with the design. Simply add your featured image, add the client name, add the project details, and you're good to go. I'll show you how to actually add this kind of slider on your homepage, just like this. I'll show you how to make either the featured image clickable, either to make the client name clickable or only add a button to be clickable or make the whole card to be clickable. I'll show you how you can actually create this kind of portfolio listing or portfolio archive page. And after creating our portfolio archive page, I'll take you through on how you can create a single post page or a single project page that details all the information about that specific project. Just like you see over right here, this is a project called Sports Rise, and the client is called Soccer School. Over right here, we have a thumbnail or a featured image, which is actually dynamic. Uh, the client name, we have the project description or brief description, what the, what the designer did for the client and all the requirements of the project. And down below here, we have a gallery. It will actually enable you to showcase your works on your website in a gallery. And when someone clicks on that gallery, they are able to go through the different project images, just like you see over here. I will show you how to add a URL to that website or to that project so that your website visitors or your portfolio visitors can go over right there and check out the project that you worked on or check out this specific project. And again, we now bring back all the full details of the client and all these details will actually be dynamic. Then over here, I'll show you how to add a basic contact form, which is from Elementor. 
after that i'll show you how to actually add another slider down below here on every project which is actually dynamic that can showcase similar related projects to the specific project someone is viewing right now on your website then down below here i'll show you how to add a form that will actually enable you to collect some information from your client like maybe if they want to request for a quote and this form will include the url of the page that the website visitor actually used to contact you and then you'll actually be able to respond directly to the email field that they entered over right here then later on i'll show you how to create a beautiful layout just like this which are actually created from scratch how to add this kind of toggle button for an off canvas menu that actually tracks my mouse how to actually add this kind of off canvas menu that shows up in a pop-up add your menu over here add a form over to your off canvas menu and also how to make your sections look just beautiful as this over here and obviously how you can create your home page including adding an animated header just like this i am a media designer i am a web designer and also a description just like this buttons and animation and also adding all these other sections on our home page including the testimonial section let's get into the back end of our website i'll share with you the tools we are going to be using and get started creating our first dynamic web portfolio so to get started we are going to log into the back end of our wordpress website and just like you see over here when i go into the plugins area we are going to need only three plugins for this tutorial we are going to need elementor elementor pro and jet engine jet engine is the plugin that is going to enable us to create the custom layouts and actually import dynamic data into our wordpress website now if we are to look into the front end of our wordpress website the current one that we have this is how it looks like it's basically a default installation of wordpress we are going to come back to our dashboard and we are going to come over right here to jet engine and we are going to create a custom post type so what is a custom post type so a custom post type is a feature that enables you to build different kind of websites so the kind of content or websites that you can build using custom post types include like you know car listing websites property listing websites services and you know providers or even rooms or orders like for example hotel websites all can be created using custom post types so in our case we are going to be creating a portfolio website for a web designer just like me or just like you so that we can showcase our works on the front end of our website so that the next time we really have to list our previous works we don't have to go through headaches of styling and all that stuff we simply just go to the back end and add a new project add media add text and we are good to go now the question is why do we have to create a custom post type why don't we just use the normal post type that is in wordpress like the post section or the page post type the answer is the available post types in wordpress they, they are very limited and they cannot give us the possibility to add all the features that we want to have on our website and what do i mean by that for example when we come over here on our final website you realize that we have meta feeds like project theme software duration and in certain cases you may not want to use some of the default features in wordpress for example the default editor or the default except feature or sometimes you may want to simply have custom categories like i'm going to show you in this tutorial back over here into our dashboard come over here to post types once you have your jet engine plugin installed jet engine is one of the plugins that is provided by crocoblock and you can use it to create your custom post types uh, custom uh, meta fields meta boxes taxonomies loops uh, listings and a lot more like you're going to see in this tutorial so to create our very first custom post type that is going to enable us to create our projects post type where we are going to list all the projects that we're working on and then add on the meta fields or the custom metadata that we are going to provide to our website we are going to simply just come over here to jet engine post types and we're going to simply say add a new post type here we are going to simply just say the name of the project the name of the post type is called project or we can say projects so the slug is basically the name WordPress is going to use to access the URL of that page. So in this case, I'm going to leave it as projects. Then come over here to labels. I'll leave everything under here as it is. Then I'll simply just come over here to advanced settings. 
I'm going to leave everything over here to be at the default settings and I simply just come down below here and I'm going to simply just say uh, menu position by the menu position they are asking me where to where to position this post type over right here in the menu so you see here we have the dashboard we have the posts media pages you know comments so I can leave it blank or I can simply just hit in a number like three so it will be in the menu position three then we can choose a menu icon it's just like any of these icons you see over right here so I'm going to choose one from here I think this this will you know work well for me and then here they are asking me will it be supporting any of these features for example the title and the editor so by title and editor this is what I mean when you come over here to the posts or the already existing post type and you say add a new by default WordPress is giving you the option to add a title and they also give you the editor where you can actually type in your text then you also have the except feature you have the featured image and all that stuff but in this case we want to instruct WordPress to enable us access just a few or a handful of those features for example we'll only use the title and the thumbnail simply come back here and I'm going to delete the editor the editor is what you see over here then what I'm going to do is simply come back here and then I'll select from the options here and I'll say I want to have a featured image or a thumbnail and I can still come back over here and choose any of the others but in this case I simply just want the two then what I can do right now is to say add a post type so by adding a post type we're going to see another post feature over here now you see we have a new post feature called projects and we have the option to actually click and say check out the projects and you see we can say add a new project so when we say add a new project then this is going to open us into another page where we are only going to have the title and the option to add a featured image so you see here we have the title we don't have the editor and the option to add a featured image now we have created our very first custom post type now we are going to add meta fields to this custom post type so by meta fields, these are actually features that extend how much data you can actually add to a specific post type. For example, when I come over here to the dashboard of our already existing WordPress website and I come over here to portfolio, actually I'm going to go back and rename my projects from projects to portfolio so we have something that is uniform. We already have a number of projects in our portfolio so when I say edit this, you realize that we have the title which is one of the features that we added on our custom post type and we also have a featured image now we are going to add meta fields these are the fields over here for example the client the project type the duration the cost a home page url even a meta field that is actually an editor and a lot more just like you see over here I'm going to head back over here to our already created post type and I'm going to simply just come to jet engine and I'm going to come to post types but first I want to first rename our post type to name it to be portfolio instead of projects so I'm going to come over here to actions and I'll edit and I'm going to rename this to portfolio the same over here portfolio so in the case whereby you are renaming your custom post type when you have already added projects to that custom post type you will have to say update posts for example check this if you have already created posts of this project type and want to automatically change the post types of these posts you may want to actually enable that and then you simply say update post type then you are going to see that here it's going to change to portfolio okay so when we come back here now it's showing us uh, invalid post type because we have changed our post type name so I'm going to simply just go back to the dashboard and here we are so in the case whereby you want to visit our post type URL we are going to simply just copy our website URL over here and then we are going to add portfolio and cheers there we are we can now access our portfolio archive page now what we are going to do 
So once we open up our post type after making the changes to the name, you will want to have to come over down below here to say rewrite the slug. And in this case, we are going to change this to portfolio. I'm showing you this because it normally happens whereby you have already created your custom post type and then you have to have to change the name of that custom post type. And if you don't take these precautions, then it's going to make your website break. And then you have to struggle trying to find out where you got the error. Then simply uh, update over here. The next thing we are going to do is we're going to change or update our permalinks by coming over here to permalinks under settings. You'll simply have to select the post name and make and save changes. So back into our dashboard, we are going to go back under jet engine, then we come to post types. Back under post types, we are going to come over here to edit the post type and then we are going to add our meta fields to this post type. So we're going to start by saying add a new meta field. Let me open up one of the already existing pages over here. So for example, this one. So we have uh, a meta field, one that is called a client, one that is next is an editor. Then we have a gallery widget. Then also we have uh, a website link or field. Uh, and then all these other meta fields for the project, the duration, the theme, software, and the plugins and the cost. So how do we start creating this meta field? So what I'm going to do is, when you come over here to the already existing website, this is how this data looks like in the back end. And in the case you've created this website for your client, this is the section that you'll be accessing once they log into the website and they will be only in position to make changes over here. They can't tamper with the design. Once they are done, they simply publish and that information will automatically appear on the project's page. Okay, so now let's start with one, adding the client as the meta fields. So by coming over here, so we're going to say, Label is client, I'll leave that as it is. Uh, the field type is actually going to be a field and the field, sorry, the object type is going to be a field and the field type is going to be a text because they simply have, you simply have to enter text or the name of the client. And the description, this is basically what describes what that specific meta tag is all about. To put to good use, of the specific field. For example, when you come over here, you know it's something called enter the name of the client. So when I come over here, I'll say enter the name of the client. Okay, we can determine the field width, how wide it will go in the editor or in our back end. Just like you see over here, this meta field is taking up about 33% of the page width the same with this and the same with this. But we're going to look into that just after we add the first three meta fields. So now we are going to add the project type and then the duration. So what I'm going to do is come back over here. Uh, we can still, we can say we can limit the number of characters, but we don't want to do that because some clients may have very wide names or others may have very short ones. We don't want to do that at the moment. And yeah, we can make this field to be required that for every project you're going to enter into here, they should actually add the client name by making it required. So I'll leave it, you know, at default without having it required. So I'll simply say add a meta field. So now we have finished adding the meta field for client. Now we're going to add the next meta field, which is actually, I think it's called project type. So project type. So over here, I come back. I'm going to say project type by clicking down below here, it automatically generates uh, the name of field ID. Then the object type is going to be a field. Then the field type is going to be a select because in this case, we are going to have options. One is able to select from, for example, for our project types, someone should be in position to select between whether it was a web design project, a branding project, or basically a prototyping project. So I'm going to say add a field option. So here I'll say web design. And the option label is actually going to be web design. So is checked or selected. So we, we can enable this to be the default checked value. So I can say yes. Then we can say uh, add another meta field. 
So prototype option label is also going to be prototype. And then we can add another and say it's going to be branding. Same below down here, we also say branding. So over right here, we have our three options, which is web design, prototype, and branding. Just like you see what we have inside here, we have web design, brand guideline, or prototyping. Actually, I'm going to change one to brand guideline. So by coming back here, I'm going to say brand guideline. Guideline. Under here, we're going to add a placeholder text. So the placeholder text is what appears before actually someone selects. So it will be, for example, here. The placeholder text is going to be here. So for example, it says select an option. So I'm going to come over here and say placeholder text is going to be select an option. We can say allow multiple select values, yes. A client may come with a project that will require you to do for them prototyping, our brand guideline, and even a website. So we want that someone is able to select all options once they are creating, once they are adding this data. Over here, we can describe the meta field. By this, I mean the description of that meta field to the client or the user. So in this case, we are going to say kindly enter by selecting the options available. This information is not shown on the front end. It's basically to guide your user or whoever is entering data in the website. Then the thing we, we're going to talk about this just a moment uh, is required. No, we are going to leave the rest as they are. Then we're going to add another meta field. And the other meta field is actually the duration of the project. So I'm going to say label is duration. It's actually duration. So the name stroke ID. Object type is a field and the field type. So we can actually say it's a number because it's going to be a number we just have to enter in because some projects will take one week, two weeks or three weeks. So we, we're going to make it to be a number. Minimum number is, let me say one. Or we can actually not enter one because maybe a project will take sometimes 24 hours. So if you say minimum number is one week, it means that all your projects have to take not less than one week. I'll just leave the two uh, empty. And down below here, you can add a step value. A step value means that how many steps whenever someone clicks on any of these, how many steps will it go? So maybe it will jump from one to five to 10. So here I'll just simply say one. Once someone clicks on that, for example, when someone clicks over here, it only takes them one step up or one step down. So back here, I am going to say just one. And here I'll say the description, enter the duration of the project. So in brackets, I'll just put represents weeks. So it's one week, two weeks, or three weeks. Now, this is where we're going to talk about the field width. Now, the field width is basically to enable you to kind of put together related information in the back end of your website together. For example, the client, the project type, and the duration. It, to me, they make sense to be together. As well, you can rearrange them and move them to wherever you want. Let me just show you how that works. So by coming over here to the post types, I'm going to come over here and say this field is going to take 33.3%. I come back up to the first uh, meta field. I also make it 33.3%. 33 and I come back up over here and I say this field is also going to take 33.3% and I'll say update post type. Now, when we come over here to our portfolio and we say add a new portfolio, boom, you see we have our client where we can actually add the client name. Then the project type, here we can click 
Remember, we automatically set that by default, it will select web design as an option. So when I click over here, I can choose from all the other options. From a drop down, I can even delete. And the duration, so someone is able to add one, two, three, four, just with one step ahead. Now let's add the other custom fields step by step, and then we can move on. So back into our editor, come down below here, and then we say add a meta field. So we're going to add the cost meta field and also the home page. By the home page meta field, I mean that someone will add this kind of option that someone can click and they go straight to that project home page. So what I'm going to do over here is da -da -da, come add a, a, a meta field called cost. And this is going to be a field and it's going to be a number and uh, no minimum value, no maximum value, no step value. And for the steps, maybe we can say when someone is clicking on the steps, the minimum added value is, let me say 50. So over here, project description, we can say add the project in US equivalent. This is basically to guide the person who's going to enter in the data so that whenever they are entering in data, they should convert whatever money the client is going to pay for that project into US equivalent. And once we pull up that data into the front end, it will appear something like this. So don't worry, I'm going to show you how to actually add something like this on, in this tutorial. Back over here into our post type, uh, we're going to add another one. And this is going to be uh, the label, it's homepage, or we can say website or whatever. So home page. So here we're going to select text. And then uh, down below here we can add the description. So enter the website home page or URL of the client stroke project. Then the field width, we can specify and say this is going to be 50%. The same for also our cost field, which is this here, it's going to be also 50% to have something that looks just like this. So this is taking out 50% and 50%. Excuse me. Uh, the rest is going to be left at default. Character limit uh, is required default, everything's I'll leave everything on the default. Then we'll add a new meta field. And this meta field is going to be our editor or the text editor. So I'll come over here and say description or project description. And then over here, I'll just say the field is actually a field. The object type is a field and the field type here is going to be either a text area or the editor or the rich text editor. So I'll select the rich text editor because this here, it gives you more options to actually format your data in the editor itself. By that, I mean, you'll be able to, for example, let me say here, bold, you can do italics, you, know, you can add numbers, you can add, whatever you want. Uh, and that will also be witnessed on the front end. You see something like this. Now this is a quote, a, a quotation. That cannot be done if we just selected the text area. Okay, so we cannot do basic formattings. So I select this. Then over here, we can say below. Field width is 100%. I'll leave the rest on default. I'll add another meta field. This is going to be a theme, then the plugins use the software and the gallery. So the next one is going to be a theme. So in the case whereby the project you worked on is a website, we would want to see what theme you actually used, or you would want to show your website visitors or your future clients that you actually have used some themes before on some you know, projects that you worked on. So it will say theme, then the field is field, then the field type is text. Description, enter the uh, field type is 100%. I'll leave the rest 
our default. Then we are going to add the plugins. So plugins uh, name plugins, then object type is field, then the field type is actually going to be a checkbox. Why? We want that someone is able to actually to select from the already available options because some designers prefer to work with certain tools oftentimes because maybe they simplify their process or it's the system they are using once when they are creating or building a website. So in this case, you also give the person an option to add a custom value or a custom option in the case whereby the provided options don't give them the option that they want. For example, if someone has been using Astra for all the other projects, but for this specific project, they used Cadence. So that means that if you did give them the option to, to add the custom value, they will be left with no option, but not to add data. So back over here, I'm going to say it's a checkbox and we can say allow custom values to be added. This is what is over here, add a custom value. And over here, we're going to say add a field option. So over here, it's going to be, so the plugins over here, you can see uh, Elementor, Page Builder. And we have to enter the option label because once we don't enter the option label, someone will have the checkboxes with the value in there, but it will be invisible simply because we have not added the option label. Let me show you how that actually would look like. So if I don't enter the option label and I say update, when I come over here and I reload, you see under the plugins option, we have a checkbox, but we don't see what we are actually checking, okay? So once now I come back over to our post type and I simply just copy this and I add the option label, I update, I come here, I reload, you are now going to see that we have Elementor page builder as the option. Okay, so please don't forget that once you are trying to create the options down below here. So here we can say it's selected by default. No, we just simply want someone to select from the options that they see available. Here I'll add another one. Let's say rank math. Add another one. Let me say WP Vivid. This is the plugin I always use to backup and restore my WordPress website or WordPress websites, go copy and paste. So I'll just simply say update. And now we are going to come back here and you see that we have the three options plus a custom value we can add. So let's add another meta field by coming over here and say add a new meta field. And this is going to be one called software. So I'm adding the option called software because this is a web designer's portfolio. So not that always the web designer is working on websites or the web designer is working on only prototyping. So by giving them the option to add this kind of software they use that they can also display on the front end is vital. So in this case, I'll, I'll add three softwares. So uh, the object type is field. The field type is going to be a check box or let me see where is this a checkbox yes uh, we can allow custom values or in the case whereby you only do branding and prototyping maybe you only have specific software as you use so I will disable that then I'll come over here and I say and the options so let me say this is Adobe Photoshop So the option value is over there. Then we can say add another, let me say Figma for your wireframing. Uh, we can add another one, let me say called Canva. Uh, in the case whereby you have another tool that you use, uh, maybe another tool you use is Adobe Illustrator. Copy this and paste. 
Then the other option I didn't talk about or have not told you about is rearranging these options. So by coming over here on the hamburger icon, I can just pull this over, move it up here. So we have, you know, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, then the others coming next. I can add a description, but I'll not add any description for this specific option. I'll just simply add another meta field. And the meta field I'm going to add here is a gallery. The gallery meta field is very important, especially for this portfolio website that we are creating because we want that our visitors can have a look at our previous, you know, projects that we worked on. And that's why I highly recommend Jet Engine because one, it is cheap and it gives you a ton of features that you can actually work around with, unlike other softwares. For example, like um, SCF. SCF is very powerful, but one in the free version of SCF, you actually don't have the gallery widget. And if you are to upgrade and use SCF Pro, it's extremely expensive and out of hand. And that's one of the areas, in my opinion, that Jet Engine beats them hands down. So down below here is, uh, I'm going to add a name field, it's gallery, object type is field, and field type is going to be actually a gallery. Now, remember there are two options. There is the media option and the gallery option. The media option will only give you an option to add just one media file. It can be an image, a PDF, or whatever you want. I'll make the value ID to be a media ID and the description, I'll say, you know, select. And the field width is 100 and that's all. It looks like we are done adding all the meta fields for our project. So I'm going to simply just come over here and say update. Come back over here on our portfolio page and I simply reload. Okay, let me see how now this looks like. So we have literally everything over here, the theme and the plugins, the softwares and choose a media file. Okay, now this looks pretty good. So we have now created our custom post type and we have added all the meta fields that extend how much data we can add on this specific custom post type. And now we are going to move on to another section of adding a custom taxonomy. So in this section of our video, we are going to look into how we can create our custom taxonomies. So in a layman's language, actually taxonomies help you to group your website content or posts in a certain way. Let me give you an example of houses. You may have, you know, houses and inside those houses you have condos, you have bungalows, you have flats and all that stuff. You may decide to create a custom taxonomy called houses and in there you will specify like you have condos, you have flats, you have bungalows and those are actually called terms. Just like you see over here on the Croco Block website, they actually tell you that taxonomies allow you customizing the post types according to any classification or characteristics. And the terms are inside the taxonomies. Now this is what I was talking about that you have a taxonomy called houses and in there you have other terms that are inside the taxonomy and this will be the kind of houses that are in there. For example, the bungalows, condos or apartments. So these actually add additional classifications or attributes to the taxonomy. I hope that now really makes sense. Now going here to our dashboard of our already made website and we come down below here to Jet Engine and come to taxonomies. We created one taxonomy or one taxonomy that I named category. And once you look over here on the portfolio section, you see we have already a taxonomy that is helping us to group our content or the posts, which is called category. And under that category, we have terms that are in there. We have a term called branding, we have web design, recent and featured. So these are actually enabling me to group my content based on whether it was a web design project, whether it was a branding project, or it is one of the recent projects or one of my featured projects. So that is how you can differentiate between terms and taxonomies. You can actually have several taxonomies. For example, you can have a property type as your taxonomy, property color as your taxonomy, and in there you will have different colors of, for example, the paintings of your buildings and a lot more. Now let's head straight and create our very first taxonomy for our website. So inside our dashboard, we are going to head straight here to, to taxonomies. 
and we are going to name our taxonomy category because we basically want to categorize our content so here i'm going to name this to be category and i want to name this to be the project category as the slang project category now let me say in this case we have a project category called web design so they will move from the home page to project category called web design and all websites that are falling under there they will of course show up in the listing grid hope that now really makes sense okay now the post type or we have to select a post type of which this taxonomy is going to be applied to and over here we have to select our post type which is portfolio but as well you can add other post type where you want to assign this taxonomy to for example the posts or the pages the media files and all that stuff for now i'll only have portfolio selected and under the labels i'll leave everything on default and we'll come over here to advanced settings and you want to make sure that you select the option that this taxonomy is hierarchical so i'll select this next what we're going to do is we're going to add a custom meta field for this taxonomy why a meta field maybe you want to add like a featured image for that taxonomy so that whenever someone is opening up uh, the home page for that taxonomy obviously the taxonomy media or the gallery or whatever is showing up and so in this case i'm going to come over here and i'll say uh, featured or thumbnail uh, id is thumbnail field type is field uh, object type is field and field type is going to be uh, let me say a media media id and the description like you can say uh, it can be a hundred percent and that's it simply add the taxonomy or create our taxonomy now when we come over here to our portfolio boom we have a new taxonomy called category when i open that up so i'm going to start by adding uh, an item over here so let me say this is going to be branding uh, which is a term so branding it has no parent i can say add category so we have a new term under our custom taxonomy called category and this term is called branding and we can always assign new portfolio projects that we create to branding and even other terms i'm going to add like featured then i add that then recent that goes for recent projects add that and here i'm going to say web design web dash design and uh, i add that too so i have them over here just like you see we have them over here and the number over here is representing the number of portfolio projects call them posts that have been assigned to that specific term stroke category so you can as well choose to add a media or a thumbnail for your category so let's do a small recap we have understood custom post types we've created one then we have added meta fields to our custom post types now we have also created a taxonomy that is going to help us to group our post types or our content on our website now we are going to add some data into our projects or our portfolio so that we can use this data to display content that looks like this right so let's get started back over here on our portfolio we're going to say add a new and this is going to be a project that we have worked on so over here we're going to add a title of the project let me say the title of the project is called sports rise and who is the client of that project um the client is that client and the type of the project let me say it's a web design project or if if it's not a web design project i can now still check through over here or in case it it involved more than two assignments like web design and brand guideline well and good the duration of this project let me say it was three weeks or seven weeks and the cost of the project it was maybe three thousand eight hundred dollars remember now this dollar sign will be guiding whoever is entering in this data to know that they should enter in figures that amount or represent dollar equivalent then the home page uh, home page you just simply type in the text rise.com 
that's it and the description of the project so i'll just grab over here some dummy content come add it over here now remember when we are choosing the type of editor we decided to use the what you see what you get editor which is this and enables us to do a couple of styling like adding paragraphs uh, we can as well you know bold stuff we can add hyperlinks in this editor like by the time you're actually watching this tutorial you know how to use this kind of editor it's been kind of the default wordpress editor you can even quote stuff something like that okay now i'm done with that the theme used over here let me say this was astra theme the theme we don't have options because for a wordpress website you only have one option for one theme that's why i made it to be kind of text where you simply just have to type otherwise for plugins you can have more than one plugin on, on a wordpress website and let me assume here um we use elementor and then we also use rank math and the software uh, for prototyping actually not prototyping for creating the brand guideline so here it is um maybe someone used figma and illustrator and the project gallery project gallery is basically going to represent whatever you did for that project so over right here you realize we have these images we have the featured image and we have these other images that are basically showcasing what you did for that project and someone is able to open them up in a light box okay so now let's add them up over here come to gallery choose media and we are going to upload our files once i have them added then i'm going to add another which is going to be for our featured image remember when we are creating our custom post type we chose to use the title and the featured image so over right here we are going to pull up this image then we are going to categorize we're going to select our term where this specific project lies so it can be in the recent we did branding and we also did web design okay now that makes sense so once we are done we can simply say publish here if we actually go to preview this page we are not able to see anything why aren't we able to see anything so currently the theme we are using is not really understanding what to show where and how and that's why we need now to create our single page template that we are going to use to display all this information just like you see over right here but before we go into creating this single page template we are going to create our loop or our preview or our grid so that we are able to preview this list or grid on our website and someone is able to click on that grid or loop or listing and then access this specific project so we first create the loop or the listing grid and then we create the template for the single page just like this so to actually be able to create our card or loop or listing grid what we are going to do is simply come over here to jet engine and we're going to say listing this listing is what we see over right here when i come back here to the home page of our already created site this is the listing grid that we are going to create currently and add all this data so that when someone actually clicks over here they are able to access an individual project in your portfolio I'm back into our dashboard under jet engine listing we're going to say add listing item and we're going to say listing source it is actually going to be posts and from which post type now we are going to select our portfolio which is our post type and then we're going to say listing item name you can say uh, portfolio loop uh, listing view elementor or gutenberg we're going to use elementor and say create listing item all right so here we are now we are going to create our listing grid or loop or block or preview whatever you call it for as long as you really understand what it means i hope you're enjoying this tutorial this far i know it's a little bit complicated i know if you are starting out and you really don't understand what custom post types are custom taxonomies are but one thing i have to tell you is that you just simply um, have to be patient with yourself and then you learn one thing at a time and then over a time you realize that you're getting to understand this and you really enjoy it creating dynamic websites with ease okay there are two ways to actually create your listing grid or preview blog one is first of all by 
adding a new section, add a section of three columns, just like this. Or you can actually just close this over and you're going to simply add one section, which is this section, and come over here to the width and you can enter in the width of that section, let me say 380 pixels. Now we have this set width for a preview block. So me, I prefer to go with this, but for you it can be something different. So let me first uh, add some uh, margin top and bottom because we haven't yet created our header. So that's why it is really taking up the space to the, to the top. But later on, I'll have to remove the, the margin top and bottom. So over right here, let's go to our home page and we see what we want to have on our preview block. We want a featured image. We want to have our client name. Let's first start with those two. Image uh, under the basic widgets, image. And we can select a dynamic image over here by coming over here to the dynamic icon and come under Jet Engine. And we're going to say custom image. And it's going to be a full image. I, I prefer to use a full image, but you can as well use the large image option. Over right here on the range icon, you can select the field and you can say we want the uh, post thumbnail and boom it shows up. In the case whereby you don't get this thumbnail showing up you can simply come over here on the settings icon or on the gear icon and select on the listing settings and make sure that you select the posts as the listing source and select the post type to be portfolio. You'll get this preview. Next we're going to add a heading widget. So over here we're going to select our heading widget from uh, which is jet engine and it's going to be the custom field and that custom field is actually going to be the client name and Over here the client name shows up see soccer school Inc. And we're going to add a before name. So in this case it's going to be client And we want to make that everything after the client is going to be in bold. So I'll just say um, Strong and that will be in bold. Then don't forget to add a space. When I delete the space, you see over these words are now stuck to each other. So when I add a space, that's how it looks like. So we are going to come over here to the style option. I'm going to add a custom color by coming over here to the text. I'm going to simply just add my color code and I'm going to make it to be a global color. So I'll name this to be my blue. I'll also add my other color that I'll be using in the project. I'll come back over here and I'll add, come add my color code and I'll add it as a global color. So it's going to be orange. Okay, so I'm going to come back over here, select from my global color list and there I go. I'm going to choose a typeface over here that I want to use. My font face over here is going to be Matic something like that over here and 35 and leave it at 70 the font weight and so far so good all right so by on the preview it looks good I can maybe also add a colon a semicolon before and after so I'm going to come back over here to the title fill advanced before Add a space. Yeah, and that's it. Next, what we are going to do is to add these options over here that are kind of briefing your, your website visitor on what kind of project this is. So I'll start with a project theme, software, and duration. I'll grab my icon list widget. And you see I already have kind of like a template. I'm going to come over here to the dynamic tag, come down below here to jet engine and select custom field. And under the field, I'm going to select the project type and uh, before the project type I'm going to uh, enter project type and then add a space and what I'm going to do is I'll make everything to be bold after strong which is an HTML tag and that's it. I'm going to simply delete all the others and I'll duplicate this just come over here and then change uh, the dynamic tag. So come over here, choose theme, 
and before I'm going to say theme, that's it. Then I'll duplicate uh, again, come over here, text, custom field, from theme I'm going to select software, come over here, the before text is software, that's done, then duplicate this also and next under custom field, under the custom field select the range icon field come and select cost and the before text is cost. As simple as it is. So we have added our list icons and added a summary of our project. So what we're going to do is now to change the icons for this specific, uh, for the project. So I'll come over here, select from the icon library. I'll randomly select icons. So let me see a project. I have this over here. Um, for theme, I'm going to choose, I don't know what. I'll use the QR. Okay, for that. Next, I'm going to use another, to come over here, choose code. Then for the cost, come over here, something like this, insert. Yeah, and there I go. Then I'm going to come over here to the style. I'm going to, uh, for the icon, I'm going to give it a global color that I already chose. And um, that's it for the text. Change the typography, Amico. I'm going to reduce a little bit on the font size. Yeah, something like, something like that makes sense. Then next, what we are going to add is a button like this. So we are going to come over here and we're going to add a dynamic button. So when I come to the widgets, I'll look up for a button, which is this. So the button text is going to be view project. And we're going to add a dynamic link to our button. So by coming here to link, come to the custom field from Jet Engine, then the field we're going to select the home page. When I hover over this, you realize that it will be taking you straight to the portfolio page for this specific project. The background color is going to be our blue color and then uh, on hover it will change to the orange. The typography is supposed to be our Amico. Text color will be white, so I will choose the white or off-white, so something like this. And that's it. So right now, we're going to align our button to the left. So something like come back here to content, have it somewhere on the left, something like that. So we're going to add a border, a border to our loop or our grid or our card and something on hover just like this. So come back here. So we want our card to have the image kind of going all the way to the borders of the card or the section. And we want our content to be padded inside this card. To be able to do this, we are going to add two inner sections because we just one section. We are not able to have this. I'm going to come to my widgets come to over here and get an inner section and I'm going to duplicate this inner section and I'm going to delete a column from here and this other column because we only need one column in every inner section. I'm going to drag our first image, take it or our thumbnail image, take it into the first inner section. I'll remove all the paddings see how that now looks like and I'll also remove all the padding on the first section on the first column sorry see how that now that looks like okay so now we have the second inner section and we're going to move in our title and then we'll move in our other content so I need to put this up here or I can simply just use the navigator 
So I have everything now inside. I can now pad this content. The way I want, I can make it like 20 padding. Okay. And I can give this whole uh, inner section a background. So when I don't give it a color, when I place it on any other background, it will use the background color of that section. So come over here, background type. I'll choose my off-white. And yeah, it looks a little bit neat. Can I add more padding to this column? Let's say a 25, something like that. Okay, now let's go to the main column. And for this column, we're going to come to a style option. We're going to give it first of all a drop shadow. And then on hover, we give it a small, you know, border that shows up. So by coming over here, we have our column selected. Under the border section, we're going to add a drop shadow. And that drop shadow is going to be one of our colors. And we're going to reduce on the blur. Just make it like a three. Wait, I have to come back and point to the right color, right? Something like that. Does it look familiar to that? And then on hover, we are going to make it to be a dark blue. So come over here on hover, give it a border. It's going to be a solid one. And it's going to be da 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 one point so what i'm going to do is simply update because now our project looks neat the other thing i want to mention is that for example we have our featured image over here and it's linking to the post thumbnail now we have our button that is linking directly to the portfolio page so the question is should we make it like someone has to click on the button or we make it that the whole card is clickable so in the case you want to make the whole card or the whole grid to be clickable, you simply just come over here to the settings, come to the listing settings, and say make listing item clickable. Boom. And there I go, I can say open in a new window, but that wouldn't make sense if a new window is opening for every project someone is viewing on your website. It looks good. I think I should just take back this. I remove the space. By coming over here, custom field, come to advanced client, just leave it to be uniform like these others over here. So now do you see how we've actually pulled in data from our back end project to now a front end, and now we are going to be able to list our projects on the home page and also create an archive page and also create a single page, and everything is just getting me excited. Okay, so now we've finished creating our loop listing or listing loop i don't know it's whatever you want to call it that's it so listing loop and now what you're going to do next is we're going to come to our home page and create something like this so that we can have a slider and then we can showcase a few of our projects on our home page but to do this we have to actually add some more projects on our current website and then we're able to list them like this on the home page okay now let me see you in that section so welcome back to this section where i want to take you through on how you can create a listing grid and actually showcase it on your home page just like this but i have to mention that while i was away for the fact that i wanted to cut time and not to make this tutorial long i started to add these other projects onto our website we had already seen how to add you know these projects for example at its spots rise so I added these others just to open for you one, like, you know, dynamic content, added the title and added all these other information, categorized it, added the featured image and also added all the other, you know, content that is belonging to that specific category. So in a nutshell, we have about 10 of those projects already that we can now echo onto our homepage. Now that you have that, now let's move together. What we are going to have to do, number one, is to want to create our home page. And on our home page, we're going to add our listing grid or our loop listing, and then we can get started. So to do that, we're going to come simply over here to pages, all pages. So we have only two pages currently. I'm going to say add a new page. I'm going to name this home page or oh, not Hamza home page. 
I am going to say publish. I'm going to edit it with Elementor. Add the section and I'm going to add the first section. I'll make this to be uh, height. I'm going to say minimum height. I'll select VH and I'll make this to be 80%. Uh, so I'm going to add a background color. So currently we are now recreating this very section over here. I'm going to add a background color. So come over here to style. I'm going to come to background type. And I'm going to add a color. And it's going to be a gray color. I'm going to come over here to the color picker. And I'm going to simply add a grayish color. Something like that. Right? I'm going to add this as our gray. So now when we come over here to the background option, we have a gray color. Then we're going to add something else. It's going to be our background image and it's going to be a fixed image. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add a background overlay and it's going to be an image. Come over here and I'm going to select that image. Okay, insert the image. I'm going to position it to be center, center. So center, center. Uh, it's going to be fixed. Uh, no repeat. And it's going to cover. The opacity is going to be 0 0.08 for that image. You see, as how it looks now. Good. Next, what I'm going to do is simply add a title. So come over here to our widgets. Add heading, it's going to be a H2 and say recent projects. The center is come to style. I'll give it our color, which is blue. Come to the typography. I'll choose my typeface, which is a man. Amantic 65, the font face, the font size. Then next what I'm going to do is add our listing grid. So I'm going to come over here to my widgets. I'll look up for listing grid, drag the widget over here. And I'm going to select the listing, which is our portfolio loop. And boom, there it shows up. But we have to limit how many of these that we actually want to display over here. So uh, we can choose a number of columns. You can, if you want two columns, or we say two columns, that's how it look like. If you want four columns, that's how it will look like. The number of posts, I'm going to make them six, but I want it to be a slider. So the maximum number of posts that are going to slide in here, they are going to be six. So I'm going to say enable slider, but I want to use the dots, okay? And it's going to be autoplay and it's going to be on a loop. So for the slider, I'm going to come down below here to the dot styling and come over here to the color. On normal, it's going to be white. And then uh, active is going to be da -da -da, our blue. And on hover, it's going to turn to our orange. You see, something like that. So now we have added our slider. Uh, let me first update this. So I update. Uh, we're going to come back and remove the margins because we added them over here in our template. But let's first preview. Uh, first of all, by going to, we are going to first go to our dashboard. So we set our homepage as actually our homepage, settings, reading settings. Then come over here to static, homepage. We select our homepage and we make it to be our homepage. Then we come over here to the site and we are going to look at our slider. Boom, there we are. Okay. 
So far so good, well padded inside and the whole card is actually clickable just like we set it up over here in the listing settings to make it clickable. Yeah, so we're going to remove this margin, top and bottom, come back here, I want to select this section and remove the margin. That's it, update. Uh, come over here and I will reload. Good, looks, looks good, looks good. So for example, like Pizza Movers doesn't have a theme. And uh, for this, we are going to add something like not applicable because if this is empty, we should just not leave it empty like this, but we say something like not applicable. To do that, whereby if there is no information showing up on a certain field, what do we do so that we actually show some information or some fallback information? I will come over here and select my icon list widget, then come to content, come to theme, and I'm going to come over here to the custom field range icon, and come down here to advanced, and I say the fallback, it's going to be not required for this project. That's why you see that over here, projects that were didn't require a theme, they have not required. That's basically fallback information whereby if nothing shows up, then this information is showing up. Okay, so I come back here, I'll simply update. So I'm ahead, I'm going to add some padding at the top here. It's going to be our unlink, I'll add 100 and bottom of at 100 padding so we have enough breathing space. I'll also increase on the font size of our title to 75. So I'll change the slide to scroll from 1 to 2 and then everything looks fine for me. Uh, let me first update over here and come back to my home page and reload this. Uh, it also looks like I have to do a, a certain fix for the, uh, for the code option. So come back over here, come to the list widget. So for projects that also didn't require any uh, software, we can also add for the fallback option only. I'll update and have a look at this now. Okay, looks nice and neat. So on, a, on our homepage, we are going to add a button over right here. So without wasting any time, I'm going to simply just come back over here to our loop. So copy this. I'm going to come over here to our homepage. I'm going to grab our, my navigator and I'll just simply paste a button and I'm going to style up this button a little bit, like come to style. The other thing that we have to do is, of course, link this to the, to the portfolio archive page. So what is the portfolio archive page? So to identify the portfolio archive page, we are going to simply just come over here back to our dashboard. And you are going to come to your uh, jet engine under jet engine, come to post types because the portfolio page should be kind of the archive page for this website. So the post type slug for the portfolio or for the archive is actually called portfolio. So you're going to copy this slug and come over right here to your web address and you're going to enter in your domain name. So in this case, this is go-tutes.com for slash portfolio. That is actually the URL for my portfolio archive page. So right over here when I enter this is going to bring up a kind of a dummy portfolio archive page so we haven't yet customized our very own but this gives you an idea on what we are trying now to achieve. Though this layout is now based on the theme I'm using but now you understand that that's how you get the URL of your portfolio archive page. You can as well add it to your menu by copying the URL. Come over here to appearance, menus, 
and I am going to first of all create my main menu. I'm going to make it with a primary menu. Then I'm going to add a custom link, which is my URL, and I will say this is uh, link text is portfolio. Add it to my main menu, then come to pages, view all, and then also add my home page, and boom. Now I have my main menu or my menu for my website. Now when I come over here and click on my home page, you realize that now we have two items for our menu. Those are the same two items that you see appear. When I click on my toggle icon, boom, two items show up. So anyway, back over here. Now I'm going to come back here to my home page, select my button, and we're going to simply delete this post URL and add our portfolio link. We have our grid section looking nice and neat currently and looks like everything is okay. However, when now someone clicks on the project or to view the project page, nothing shows up, nothing shows up. So now let's head straight and I show you how you can actually create a single project page and link up all the data dynamically. So welcome back to this section of our tutorial. In this section, we are going to look into how we are able to create a dynamic single post template for our already entered in data on our website. This section will have the title, a short description of that specific service or the single post. And then over here we'll add a thumbnail image or a thumbnail which is dynamic, the client name, the description of that specific single post, a gallery, over here and you can obviously open up the images in a light box and we also add a sidebar over here that actually has a button to the home page of that specific project that you worked on and a list that basically summarizes whatever you actually offered or actually you did in that project. Then we can as well add a form that someone can easily fill in and send you an inquiry. We're going to simply come over here to our website dashboard we're going to come to Elementor under Templates and we go to Theme Builder. Under Theme Builder, we are going to come over here to say Single Post and we're going to create a new single post template and we are going to say Portfolio Single. Okay, cool. So I'm going to simply close over this. Now we can start from scratch. We are going to add our hero section or the first hero section which is this over here, and we're going to give it a height or a minimum height, uh, the view height of 75. Give it a background color and also a fixed background image. And obviously we want this to be full width. So we're going to come to style, we're going to add an image, which is this. Then uh, obviously we're going to center it and it's fixed, no repeat and size is going to be cover. When we come to our overlay color, and then we can add an overlay color, obviously. So overlay color is going to be a black, and then we are going to add it as a global color. So create the color. Then I'm going to play around with the opacity so that the image is visible. Maybe 0.8. So we are now going to add in our title and the text. So I'm going to come over here, grab the post title widget, and I'm going to come over here to the settings. I'm going to come to the preview settings, and I'm going to preview dynamic content as our portfolio, echo just one of the posts. So this is going to be sports, rise, okay, this. And now obviously, you will see that the title of that post is going to show up over right here. Now that will be the same for, for all other posts that will be viewed using this template. So I'm going to come over here, select my uh, widget, I'm going to center it, and I'm going to come to the style, I'm going to give it a white color, and I'm going to come to the typography, I'm going to give it our typeface, Amatic, SC and I'm going to make it 75. Next is obviously add a short description. So I'm going to come over here and then I'm going to add a text editor. 
So after adding our text widget, we're going to come over right here to the dynamic tag and we're going to come to Jet Engine Custom Field and we're going to select the field for the project type, come to typography, uh, change it to Amico, which is our typeface we are using. That looks fine so far. Next, we're going to add this animation, which is actually a lot of animation. So what I'm going to do is simply come over right here and I'm going to grab my Loti widget from Elementor. Then I will have to go to the Loti files website, grab my URL and I'll link to an external URL. Add my URL. I'll come over here to the settings option. So I'll come select my widget and I'm going to come to settings and I'm going to make sure that it is looped. Then come to style and I'm going to come to the CSS filters and I'm going to change this to a bluish something like this. Let me see. Yeah, that looks fine. Okay, now we are done with our first hero section. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to portfolio hero just to guide us in our navigation. Next, I'm going to add this section over here with a featured image and also the content on our website. So how do we do that? I'm going to simply come over here. I will duplicate the first section. I'll rename this to be content. I'll delete everything in here. So I'll say delete. I'll delete the background image and I add a background uh, gray. Or the color we've been using as gray and then come to background overlay and we are going to add our background image in this case which is this over here i'll clear the color and i'm going to make the opacity to be 0 0.08 and that's what we have right now next what we are going to do is to select this section come to layout and we are going to make it to be a boxed section just like this over here. Then we are going to add an inner section. So come to widgets, come to grab the inner section widget. So the first thing we are going to do right in this section is first of all, we are going to duplicate this inner section. So in the, in the first inner section, we are going to come over here and grab our image widget. So image widget, grab it, drop it in there. And we're going to make this image dynamic by referencing to the featured image dynamic option. So yeah, we select it and we're going to make it to be a full image and boom, there we go. We're going to select this first inner section and we're going to move it a little bit up into the first section. So I'm going to unlink the values over here and I'm going to move it up about maybe a hundred pixels. You see, that's how I managed to achieve this kind of layout over here. Maybe 150 will look better. So come over here and make it 150. Yeah, something like this. First remove the padding. So I'm going to come over here, select my inner section and make sure that no padding. And also the inner column, come to advanced. You don't want any padding because you want it to finish up the whole width of the column. Next, what we are going to do is now come over here to the next section and that's where we're going to do our magic from. First of all, we are going to select the column itself. So come over here, select the column and we're going to give that column a padding. So we're going to come over here and give it padding of maybe around 50. So 50 pixels all, all, all over and then come to the style and we are going to give it a background color. So come over here, give it a background color of white. Now we are going to add our content in there. So by coming over here to the widgets, the first we are going to add is obviously our client name and then the description and we'll also add a widget. So come over here and uh, we're going to duplicate this column. Duplicate, now we have two and we're going to make this to take over like, let me say a 30, or a 25 percent that be fair enough a 25 percent yeah i think i think a 30 i think a 30 would be better so 30 the title the project description select the title or the heading widget 
and over there we're going to come over here to the title and head straight to the jet engine custom field and we are going to reference to the client so then uh, on the before text we are going to say client let's style this up give it our color and also the typeface or the typography by coming over here and selecting our typeface which is amantic the size will be 65 so oh, looks looks way big so maybe uh, we make it like 45 does that make sense okay looks looks way better then we are going to add our description or project description and then the gallery so to do that we're going to simply come back over here uh, select our text editor widget and in there we are going to reference to our uh, jet engine custom field uh, then we select the field and then we'll have to select the project description boom there it shows up okay then we're going to come here to the style and we're going to come to the color we can change this to our black color and also the typeface that we want i can change the font size uh, maybe a 14 looks better then now I'll add the gallery, so by coming over here, and then I'm going to choose the gallery widget. I'll use this gallery widget, it's more advanced than this, and it gives me more, more customization features. So I'll drag it into my canvas, come here to the dynamic tag, and I'll select the jet engine gallery. Okay, and I'll make this to be only two columns. It's uh, referencing to the media file and I can choose the image size. I'll leave it to stay medium, save a draft and I preview. Okay, so we have our project size. So for the project type, the featured image showing up over there. Then we have our client and our description. The gallery is not showing up for some reason. So I have to come back over here and I have to basic gallery select field gallery yes i had to select the field because once you reference to the jet engine gallery you actually have to select the field of that gallery so such things can actually you know show up and you try to figure out what issue it actually is but the most important thing is to go back step by step and check out if you've done the right thing the right way all right so I'm going to add some spacing between the images so i'm going to say spacing be like 20 20 looks fine looks good so far so i'm going to simply save a draft and then we are going to preview our you know single template come down below here boom our images show up there we go there we go there we go so now let's work on our widget section so the widget section has the button to the home page then we also have an icon list and also a form to make an inquiry. To do that, we're going to simply come back here to our editor. We'll come over here to the widgets and then we are going to choose a button widget. So button, drag it over right there. We are going to make it to be large. We can reference this to a dynamic tag. Come to jet engine, custom field and the field is going to be the home page this is already clickable so once someone clicks over here boom they are taken straight to the home page of the client come to the style uh, we don't want any border radius so once you are done styling up your button adding the background color the paddings and also the hover options over here then we are good to go so we can as well center this so to have it just in the middle then next what we are going to do is obviously to, we are going to add our icon list. So to do this, we are going to simply come back over here to our other grid or our loop that we had created earlier and we just copy this and we are going to simply come and paste this here. So paste. Okay, so we can now start with this. Now when we come back here to our already made website, we want to echo the project, the duration, the theme, software, plugins, and the cost we already have the project theme software and cost so now we'll add the duration so come over here i'm going to duplicate this 
I'm going to come to the custom field option, then select the duration, and the word after is going to be weeks. We have to add that because we want it to show up over here as weeks. See how that looks like. I'm going to add a space and yep, so we can as well add an icon and change the name over here from cost to duration. Okay, looks good. Then we are going to add another, which is actually plugins by duplicating this, come over here, custom field data, and we're going to choose the one called plugins. Okay, and come over here and say the word before is plugins, and I am removing the weeks because plugins are not based on weeks. So there we go. Then I can come over here to the icon library and I can choose, you know, an icon to use. Then I can rearrange this the way I want. So the cost will come last. Plugins will come over here. Duration will come over here. Okay, maybe duration will come second. And that's how you can manage to reorganize your list icons in your sidebar. Then we are going to add uh, this over here, the heading and a form. So come over, come back here and then we are going to come and add, what is it called? A title or a heading widget. This is not going to be dynamic, so I'm just going to add it and say, make an inquiry, inquiry, and I'm going to style it well, uh, blue, and it's supposed to be in our font size or font face, um, and take, or I can just simply come, copy this, and paste the styling, paste style. Next, I'm going to add now our form by simply coming over here to the widgets, search for the form widget, position your form widget, I will hide the labels, I'll come to the styling and I give it rounded borders, link all of them and uh, make it to be let's say a 10. 10 looks good. I'm going to come to the button and the button background color, we are going to make it to be orange and on hover, uh, on hover, it's going to change to our blue, something like this. That is to do with the basic styling. The other things like uh, the actions after submit under content, actions after submit you want to collect the submissions and you want to receive in an email and over here you will enter the email where you want these submissions to be sent and down below here you will enter in prompt name you can add the name of the persons who is sending over here and how do you find this field id over here by simply coming over here to the form fields come to name come to advanced and you can simply copy this short code come back here to form actions after submit uh, email and the from name you'll simply just paste this short uh, short code that means that when someone sends you an email from name will be the name the person fed in over right here then you can decide which information you want to collect when someone sends you this form for example you want to make sure that you collect the page url that they used to make to make an inquiry or to send you an email so we're going to come back here to our column and we're going to add a background color over there. I'm going to select that column. So by selecting that column, come to the style. I'm going to add a background color, so which is our gray, which is something like this. Doesn't look the same like this over here because we added, for this page, we added the padding to the whole inner section. But let me show you how I did that. So coming back here to the inner section, I simply just added padding all over. So I'm going to come over here and add padding of 50 all over. So give it a background color, which is white. So come here, select our color, which is white. Okay, now that's how you happen to have something that looks just like this. All right, so we can reduce a little bit on the padding in here. Come back here to advanced. And I'm going to simply make it like 10. Oh, it looks very small. So we can make it like maybe a 20 or a 25. Uh, you can add some spacing between the widgets, layout, widget spacing of like 40 in between the widgets. 
on the top over here we can remove the padding so that this title is kind of aligning with the button over here so come over here select the column come to advanced and link top we are going to remove it make it zero we can just make it 10 well something like that and yeah we are good to go i'll simply save this as a draft so on the preview page yeah this is what we have looks good and uh, the project summary the brief description or the description of the project and okay so next what we are going to do is so we are going to add a slider section over here that has a horizontal slider just like this so we're going to come back here we will duplicate this section and over here i'll say duplicate and i'll say related related content uh, the inner section in here and first of all remove the top margin now we have something like this we're going to delete this featured image and we're going to delete this column and we're going to delete this content in here and here I'll, I'll simply just rename this to be related by removing uh, the dynamic contents tag similar projects then I am going to simply just come over here to the widgets area and grab my listing grid drag it into here so under general still we have to select our listing so it's going to be the portfolio loop which is that and we are going to enable the scroll slider so by enabling that we have something like this you can decide to filter what posts actually are going to be showing into in this widget over here using the terms query the post query or even a custom query uh, i'm going to drag this widget into this this column select my inner section and that inner section i'm going to right over here to the style border and we are going to add a border radius make it like a 50 for the border radius to have something like it's familiar like this right this is a 50 yeah a 70 i think a 70 works come over here i'll delete what we don't need we don't need this column we don't need this column too so for this column that is holding our inner section we are going to give it some padding so let me come to advanced padding we're going to make it 50 and there we are looks good so i'm going to remove the padding over inside here in the inner column advanced and i remove oh yeah we have something that looks good again okay all right this this looks good i'm excited if we are to instead of show three but only show only two columns how would that look like yeah not bad okay we preview and boom there we are then next what i'm going to do is to add this section over right here simply adding uh, a form and a title so come over here select our section I'll duplicate and I'll name this to be get a quote I'll delete this simply come and select this inner section give it our background color I'm going to come over here in our column and I am going to clear the in the color in there so i'll come over here select our title give it our white color and i'm going to duplicate so that i have two columns i'll delete this other column over right here then i am going to simply just come here and then grab our form widget I'm going to make here the font size to be 50 and um, the content is get a custom code then i'm actually going to break this because i want 
uh, the words to be so I also break this something like so I'll increase a little bit further I'll add some padding to the inner the inner content advanced I'll make it 80 and that's it so for the styling of the form and adding new form fields that is something you know how to do I suppose that by the time you are watching this tutorial you know how to actually customize your contact form if not I'm going to also link a video right down in the description box below so you can check out how you can actually customize or create a contact form using Elementor and Elementor Pro obviously uh, we are now going to shift this section okay so this is supposed to be uh, related content not relation content <laughs> yeah relation content no way then this is supposed to be uh, quote q u o t i'll now simply say publish add a condition and here we are not adding this condition to all the singular post types we want to add this condition to only the portfolio singles so i'll come over here and i'll select that and it will apply to all of them all right so i'll just simply save and close now when i click on the single post it's going to open up in the right template that we have created just like you see I can't be any more excited than this like seriously see beautiful beautiful and this all over here okay so we can also add some entrance animation so by coming over here and say uh, select this section come to advanced motion animation entrance animation we are going to just simply going to say fade in the same for this other uh, motion and we're going to simply say motion is going to be FAD. If I click on any of the other projects, obviously they are all going to open up using this same template that, that we have created and assigned to only be used on the portfolio singles. Then uh, next what we have to do right now is to create our archive template for our portfolio singles that's going to be pretty easy to do so by simply coming back over here into our elementor website i'll come here to the dashboard i am going to come right over here to templates theme builder and we are going to come here to archive and we're going to simply create one called portfolio archive so as the template is opening up, when I come back here and I simply visit the current portfolio archive, it's using the default portfolio archive template from the theme and it's displaying our posts over right here or our projects being listed over right here. But we don't want to use this. We want to have our very own one that looks like this. Let me show you. All right, here we are. Our projects listed and we have this too so what I'm going to do is very simple because I've already created this kind of layout and also this other section so what I have to do is very simple I'm going to simply just come back here to our editor I'm going to close this so once I close that I'm going to come back here to our portfolio because we have created literally all these sections already so I'm going to copy the portfolio hero, copy, come to here and I'll paste. Then what I have to do over right here, like to customize this, we're going to say check out my latest project and you know describe whatever this is. So I'm going to come over here, I'm going to grab the title, paste the title and I'm going to Paste the title I want to use over there, which is this. I'll copy this styling, copy, then I'll paste this styling on this other one here. I'll delete this dynamic title for the posts 
and we will have heading for our portfolio page and down below here we are also going to use uh, the text widget so come over here come to uh, the text editor widget grab it and I am going to simply simply add this content say my portfolio spans across five different industries and uh, we want this to be also having the same styling as this so I'll just copy this come over here paste the style and we are good to go then I'll delete this okay now we have the first section added next what we are going to do is come back here to our single page template to say and we're going to copy this come back here to our archive template and we are going to paste this now okay so we have it pasted what we have to do right now is very simple we are going to delete the second inner column and come over here select the first one i'll delete this image which is the featured image now I'm, i'll add my listing grid so listing grid got it over there select the listing so it's going to be project loop with portfolio and uh, over right here I'm going to remove this and it will basically show all the projects and why am I saying that simply because one in jet engine we don't have the pagination option so we can't add down below here page numbers but what we can do is that we can enable the load more option and it can be either by click or the infinite scroll so i prefer to use the infinite scroll so regardless of how many projects you have you can simply just uh, you can simply just continue scrolling and they will be showing up as one scrolls i'm doing that because i don't want to add another plugin from coco block simply to add page number but if that's something that really matters to you you can simply just install that plugin and you are good to go we are going to have to add some uh, background color and padding so I'll select the column come to color and we're going to choose our gray color and we're going to give it a little bit of transparency then we'll add some padding 50 all over okay looks good the other one we have to do is obviously add this section here so I'm going to come back here to the portfolio and I am going to copy this last section which is the quote section copy and I come back here and I'll paste and boom I think I can add some padding at the top so come select our quote come to advanced and I'm going to add that padding of 50 finally what we can do is simply say publish add a condition and it's not going to apply to all archives but it's going to apply to the portfolio archives and then we can as well add another condition and say this is also going to apply to the portfolio categories and all of them so that means that if someone goes to branding as our category which is a term we've already set or someone goes to recent or featured they'll still use the same template but let's first preview how our portfolio now looks like by simply reloading this we have our portfolio template showing up really clean just like we wanted it having all our content and you see it's loading on infinite scroll you see and all these other uh, projects have shown up and then we have our custom code over right here then what I wanted to show you also is the, that the categories are also using the same template. For example, when I come back over here, when I come to the portfolio, I come to the category. So if me or any of your website visitors visits any of the category URLs, for example, branding, they'll go to that category URL and automatically it's also using the same layout that we have set for the portfolio archive okay so this looks for me nice and neat and i'm happy about it i'm so happy that right now we are all the way through to up to 90 percent of all that we have to do for this project or for our web design portfolio next thing that we are going to do is is simply to add our transparent header over here to add a hamburger icon also a pop-up or an off canvas menu over here and obviously adding a footer on our website but i have created previous tutorials 
on how you can do that on the channel and I'll be linking some of them in the description box below. So I'm going to take you briefly how I created each of them and how I assigned them on the website. But if you want a deep tutorial on how you can create each section, you'll check out some of those tutorials down in the description box below. So on adding our header, we will simply just um, full width and it will be transparent. So I'll remove the color here. All right, here we'll select the icon for our navigation or for our toggle. Maybe I can use this and also give it a color. And on hover, it will actually turn white. Uh, what you see over here is actually a mouse track under advanced come to motion effects there is something called mouse effects and actually i gave it a 3d tilt not a mouse track so a 3d tilt and it's direct speed of two that's why you see it's doing this okay then what you have to do is simply uh, publish display it on the entire site and now we've created our header when i go back to the home page we already changed the site name to reflect the name of our website. Now we have our header over right here. Now let's go and customize our home page. I'll grab my navigation, add my hero section. Now you see that already our navigation is appearing. Over here, we're going to make some changes to our button. This color is supposed to be white. Background type is going to be orange on hover. It will change to our blue and text color is white. Testimonial section. I just come over here, change my color. Style it up a little bit. So text color is our blue. So add my images for my testimonials and I'll style this up background color is blue this style is gonna be white that is for the content for the bubble style background white some over here so the bubble style background is white um, the names name is orange and title is actually white same for her so come here select it content name orange and the title is actually white good so far so good i'll update the home page i'll style up my footer display add conditions entire site now visit my home page we've added our header we've styled up our home page and also we've added a footer so this is what we have currently we're going to add a background image for our first hero section so i'm going to come back to the home page select our hero section go to style at my background image all settings look good all right same over to this other section come to style i'm going to come here to the overlay overlay background select my background image boom there i am so now we have our static image scrolling all the way through update Alright, so that's it. 
maybe if you have a question how did i add this this is basically an animated heading widget click over there you see you have animated headline so headline animated headline and inside that animated headline you can select between different styles like rotating or highlighted then I, you can choose also typing the kind of animation then i added i am a so each line here represents a complete animation okay so even this complete animation all right so that's it then you can do the other settings just like you already know in elementor then you are good to go. So when you preview on my homepage, I already have this. Now we need to, and we also have our footer looking nice and neat, just like this. And the other thing we have to look into is when someone clicks over here, our off canvas menu should appear. So what do you do? You are going to first create our pop-up and we are going to dynamically assign that pop-up to be our off canvas menu the moment someone clicks over here. All right, so, and we are going to come here to pop-ups under Elementor. We create our own pop-up. That's it, you can adjust the width of your pop-up by clicking over here on the settings and you can say either you want it to take 60%, that is the view width, or you can use pixels. So let me say, let me say this is 80%. Me, I want to have it to take over 60%. You can add an interest animation for your pop-up. How does it show up when someone clicks over right here on the toggle button? I'll leave everything on default. You can decide to show an overlay. Overlay will kind of hide whatever is behind the pop-up. Yes, that's what I want. And also the close button, which is this over here. Uh, this is the normal Elementor form that someone can fill and send you an email. All right, so once you're done setting up your pop-up, just simply come right down below here and publish that pop-up. You don't need to add any triggers or conditions. Now what you have to do is simply come over here, go straight to your dashboard and open up your header. After selecting our toggle button, you're going to come over right here on the dynamic option for the link. Under actions, select pop-up. And over right here, we select on the, the we click on the range icon, and then we say action, open the pop-up, and here we'll select our off canvas pop-up we created. Actually, I spelled it wrong. It's supposed to be off canvas, not off canvas. <laughs> All right, so I update over here. So I come to my home page, reload. Now we should be able to click on the toggle and our pop-up shows up. All right, I come over here, boom, our pop-up is over there. So someone can use this form field and fill in and send us something or a message or whatever. You can navigate your site because this is a navigation widget over here and it can take you straight to whatever you choose. Anyway, in a nutshell, that's how you can create a dynamic web portfolio for you or for your client and then you save a lot of time in future once you want to make updates on the site or in case you have to give that site to other people to manage it so they cannot tamper around with your designs and a lot more and besides actually being able to ease your workflow in terms of updating your portfolio you'll be able to even charge more because of your experience and how easy you make work for your clients in terms of working with your websites and a lot more and obviously the knowledge you've got in this video is not only about creating a portfolio site you can as well use this same knowledge to create listing websites it can be property listing it can be hotel listings and i'm going to keep more tutorials coming that are a little bit more advanced and show you more use cases of jet engine and using dynamic content in WordPress and Elementor. I'm going to leave a link right down in the description box below of, first of all, if you want to get Elementor Pro, jet engine, and also if you want to access the template files that I've actually worked on with you in this project. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that now you have an idea on how you can create dynamic websites in WordPress with Elementor and that you're actually looking forward to your first dynamic website project. So my advice is in order to learn these things, you actually have to work on some project. If it's possible, you to start building up your dynamic web portfolio just like I did. These files are available for download to enable you get started and play around things so you get rolling. 
in case you have any questions or comments please let me know down in the comment box below in case you also like further videos just like this let me know down in the comment box below otherwise i'm very excited about this tutorial and to see what you'll be creating have a good time and see you in the next video